I worry about the idea of completely turning it over to, pe to people to just go find a school um, because then it seems to me to take away from this really American value, a value that we have that we should be responsible for teaching all of our students as a country. Now, I think charters are a good way to bring some fresh ideas and some new, um, some new ways of doing things and building some strong communities. I think that's important. Uh, but I, I do worry about vouchers. I think if we went vouchers, then potentially we would have students who just, I'm not certain that we would, on the amount of money that each voucher would represent, that we would have people who would be able to serve every single student. And so then we would be left with a, we would just basically be throwing our hands up in the air and saying, okay, we're going to take the students who we can serve easily and the hardest to serve students will be left behind. And, and can you argue that some of that's happening now? Yes, but you also have people who are committed to and, and trying to serve those students, whereas you would, could potentially be creating a free market force that would actually discourage people from teaching the students who need them the most. So um, I think, so first of all, there is absolutely no evidence that voucher programs improve outcomes for kids. So it's really interesting to me that a world of um, outcome-driven and research uh, people say that vouchers is a, a, a viable alternative. They're really, I mean, if you look at some of the larger voucher programs, they haven't been successful with children. So why in the world would we try something else that doesn't work for kids? I have no idea. I think it's, it, it's, it's based in that perception that regular school districts are not doing a good job educating children. So children, and, and they're taking money and not, not using it well. Therefore, we should be able, our children should be able to take the money and take it somewhere else where they will get a good education. And that could be a private school, it could be a different, a school in a different district, it could be just whatever place. The concern about that, again, is that people with education, people with means, people who have access to information and how to use it, will be the ones who make use of those escape hatches, leaving others behind. On the other hand, if I'm a parent with means and education and a desire that my child not go to the neighborhood school because I don't like what's going on there, I, I don't know, I don't know that, I don't want to say to that parent, I'm sorry, you're stuck. So whether it's a voucher or a school choice thing, I don't want also to say you're stuck because I want it to be fair for all the rest of the kids in the neighborhood. Oh, you sweetie, you have to stay here even if you are way ahead of everybody in your grade. I Once we gave that money into individual families' hands or if they could make that decision, it's how well-versed is that family or that group of families, how well-versed are they in what good schooling looks like? And are, they, are we certain that they have the types of options that they need to apply to in the first place. Second of all, even if we had vouchers, then again, it gets into the seats. How many high quality options are there for students? At some point on the near west side of Chicago, if there's a certain amount of students, if there are, are 30,000 students there, we're gonna need enough seats for those students and those families, high quality seats for them to choose in the first place. So I'm not certain that vouchers actually correct the, syst the systematic challenge of creating um, the number of seats needed, the high quality number of seats needed. But I think, you know, the theory of action is something I mentioned earlier, that if rich parents can send their kids to private schools, why can't poor parents? And we, we should allow them these opportunities. But the evidence based on uh, vouchers is, is weaker than the, that on charters. I, I don't know of any places where the evidence that the vouchers actually lead to better uh, achievement, uh, stronger outcomes for kids. So that seems to me to be the, the weakest area. So the voucher theory is basically to give parents complete control over where they send their child and in essence give them a backpack filled with money and say go and find a school that fits your child. It could be in the public sector, it could be in the private sector, it could be for profit, it could be not for profit, it could be, it could be sanctioned independent school, it could be a completely fly-by-night uh, school, it could be a religious institution that, that, that operates a school. But go. Go to it. 
it's the Milton Friedman theory at its best. It's just just open up the markets. The parents will figure it out. Bad schools will die because parents don't go there, and good schools that are actually delivering results will will prevail. The problem with the vouchers is is um, as they've been sort of conceptualized is there there um, there's a huge risk that we end up stratifying our society even more than it actually is today and that voucher um, reforms tend to grow up in moments of sort of policy exuberance which aren't very well thought through so the the um, the few voucher experiments that exist are very very small and they haven't really carefully handled the issues that would have to be really carefully handled if you tried to scale this as they have in places like Canada. So, for example, what would happen if the private sector, recipient of lots more vouchers, grew with abandon, but chose not to, to admit students with disabilities? What would happen to our public school system? And, and as vouchers are, voucher schemes are often constructed, those, those things aren't contemplated very carefully. I think that it bleeds resources in ways that don't help anyone. Um, I mean, effectively, what you're saying um, is, as an individual, we're going to we're going to give you uh, uh, an opportunity to bet with your feet. That said, we're not going to give you a lot of resources to help you understand where to place your bet. So, I, I mean, I think that um, you know the problem that you know I see with with vouchers is just, you know, the fact that if we are, you know, distinguishing them from from charter schools, you know, as a school choice model, um, you still, which is often get often gets, which is often misunderstood, charter schools are still public schools. And there is some level of accountability to the school district or the state. Um, whereas, you know, once you get into the realm of, of vouchers, you are really dispersing um, state education, education across the state um, in a way that, you know, really you lose uh, um, a lot of control in terms of what the quality is going to look like. And you could have structures in place that, you know, lay out some framework to be able to protect against that. But I think that just creates, um, you know, an environment where, you know, you just um, really have a, a problem trying to um, to, to deal with quality control.